So the objective is to determine the density of the snowpack. Core length, 25. Looks like I got some evidence of ground. And if we know how much water is in the snow, then we can forecast the amount of water that is going to uh, be in the streams. And hopefully that's a better indicator or a good indicator of what the snowpack is in the greater area, in the greater basin. 40 million people rely on the water in the Colorado and other surrounding basins, and it's supported with 46 transbasin diversions that are in some cases tunnels that have been burrowed through mountains and the millions of dollars that have gone in to create those projects and maintain them and support them. So we're headed right for that end point there. Seventy six point five percent of median. Just because we have 90% of normal snowpack does not mean we're gonna have 90% of normal runoff. There's a number of other factors that are in play, uh, how thirsty the soils are, uh, how deficient the streams are, and how low the reservoirs are, and the evaporation effect that just comes from dry air that is what we live with here in the Western United States. We've cut our cattle numbers. We were running 600 head of cows in 2016. And every year we have been dropping our cattle numbers by 25 head. We are lucky to be in the situation down here on the river with what our water rights are because it never has meant that we've had to shut our water off. But what it has meant is it's more difficult to irrigate because the river's lower. And so we have to do things to ensure that we are getting our water right as well with lower flows. The river channel was originally cut by 6,000 CFS worth of water. Last year when we were seeing flows of 150 CFS of water, what that means is the channel that was designed to flow 6,000 CFS is now flowing a lot less. And so what that does is it makes the river shallow and wide. And it is not a healthy situation for the fish, for grasses, it, the water's too warm. And so what we are doing with, with this river restoration project in this section that you're seeing is we are narrowing the low flow channel. We are not messing with the floodplain whatsoever, but we're pinching the very low flow channel. And when you pinch it, what that does is it speeds it up and it makes it deeper. Back during the 80s and early 90s, this river regularly produced on the order of 70, 80, 90, close to 100 fish per surface acre over 14 inches. That can compete with any high profile trout fishery anywhere in the West, you know, Yellowstone, Madison, places like that. But now, over the past 20 years, this river produces be between 15 to 50 fish per acre over 14 inches. So the best years in the modern era are equal to the very, very worst years if you go back and look at the historic era. And so, you know, why does this river produce less large fish than it once did? A story that I would commonly hear is that the bug hatches are just not what they used to be. When you build reservoirs on the headwaters of a river, you've reduced the natural volume of water that's flowing down because this river channel was formed by flows that no longer occur. And so what we need to do is attempt to restore those processes that produce such a prolific and productive ecology in past decades. That's what must be done. In 1985 was the last time we really had a flood here. We raise the hay and then we sell our hay crop to the people that own these cows. You have to have these pumps to irrigate the hay field. And the pumps were originally put in in, what was it, Bill, 1938. We were calving, it was in May, and I thought we were gonna have to move our cows because they were on little islands out here in the hay field. This river had come up that high and flooded all our hay fields. And that's what it used to do every year. It just keeps caving in and caving in because it's just a sand bottom in here. The river used to meander all across this valley and the, you know, before people. In this area, when there's no water, you just don't irrigate, especially the higher hay fields. If there's no water, you just don't, you don't 
call up the neighboring states and say, hey, we need some water. This is where it starts. So if there's no water, there is no water. I can actually see changes, not just from when I was a kid, but just within the last three to five years. We've got over 300 miles of impaired water, state designated impaired waters as under the standards of the Clean Water Act. 70% of our water is taken out of this watershed and it's taken over to the Front Range and on these lakes we're seeing significant water quality problems. You can see what it's done to the delta here because of excessive sedimentation. It's filling up the reservoir, uh, losing habitat. There's too much, too much impact uh, occurring for it to be fixed. The best we can do is try to stop the degradation that's occurring and continuing to be degraded.